Oh, hello YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing my next episode of Drunk Classics and today we are reading The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. Now, I know some of you are thinking, hey, I thought you were not reading this play this month. You were reading Little Women and you were correct. <laughs> Originally, I was reading Little Women and I read about 35% of the book and um, I hated it so much it caused me physical pain to even think about reading more of it. <laughs> I don't know. I did film about like 20 minutes worth of footage just on the first third. So maybe I might put that out as a bonus video. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see that. If not, then I just will delete it and move on with my life. But if you guys are interested, let me know. But anyway, I, I, I just decided to pivot. I, I didn't want to like force myself to read something I hate because why? It's the holidays, you know? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna force myself to do something terrible. So here we are, I pivoted The Winter's Tale. At least it's wintry, I guess, you know? So yeah, I'm gonna get into this and I'll check in in between each act. So that escalated quickly. Um. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's set the scene for a second. There's these two dudes, right? And they're both like kings. There's Polixenes and there's Leontes. And uh, they were like, they're like friends and um, Le Polixenes is staying with Leontes. I'm just gonna call him Polly and Leo. There we go. So Polly's staying with Leo, they're buddies. And Leo's like, come on, stay longer, stay longer. Just being, you know, needy. And Polly's like, you know, like, I got kids at home. Like, I kind of want to go home, you know, like where my kids are. And he's like, fuck your kids, stay longer. And so he, she's just not making any headway with him. So Leo's wife, Hermione, is like, listen, I'll go talk to him. Like, maybe I can convince him. And then she goes over there and she's just nice and stuff. She's like, you know, you could stay. Just being nice, they're friends too. So she kind of all like butters him up a bit. And he's like, all right, I'll, I'll stay another week and that's it. So <laughs> she kind of gets him to stay a little longer. And immediately, Leo is like, they must be fucking. <laughs> That's where his brain goes immediately. Because how dare, how dare Polly not stay when Leo asked him, but only stay after Hermione asked him. There's only one reason for this, and it's because they are touching genitals. And he is like fully sold on this conviction with, with the, you know, the confidence of a man who's never been told no. He is fully just into this like there's no convincing him otherwise and it just came to him i'm like does he think this about everyone it feels like red flag type behavior so it comes up to camillo this guy i think he's like another lord or something he's like camillo camillo come here so leo's like camillo bro like look at polly and hermione what do you think and Camilla doesn't know what he's talking about. He's like no nothing and he's like they're totally fucking right and camillo's like where did this come from? Like, he is also just taken aback. Because obviously, that is, a, that is a big leap. And he's like, sir, you need to calm down. I think, you. how did this happen? Like, Camillo's also equally just like, whoa, this is not a good look on you, bro. And, but like, still, even if, even though Camillo's saying like, bro, this is not a good look, calm down, it's not going on. You're, you're, you're obviously in your own head. And Leo does not, believe him either. He's just even more convinced that they're fucking. He even he calls his wife a hobby horse at one point. Like like the town bicycle. So like oh my oh my gosh. Like this is just escalating. And he's like, Camillo, I got it. You're my friend, right? We're friends, right? And Camillo's like, I guess. And he's like, listen, listen. I want you to poison Polixenes. And, he, and Camillo's like, how what how did we get here? Like, he's all so confused and he's like, okay, 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 crazy person. I, I'll poison him. I'm gonna go now, go poison him now. <laughs> like, kind of just backs away slow. And then of course he runs into Polixides right away. So Polly, he's like, Camillo, what's up? Like, Leo looks like someone spit in his breakfast. Like, why is he all like uppity? And Camillo's like, bro, like, let me tell you. <laughs> So he does. Eventually he's like, okay, Polly, like he is convinced you are fucking his wife and he wants me to poison you. And Polly's like, where did this come from? He's so like 
bonkers, like, thrown back by it, because, you know, obviously. But, like, Mel's like, listen, bro, this guy is so fucking weird, I hate Leo, I don't want to be here anymore, I quit, can I come hang out with you in Bohemia? You're going back to Bohemia, right? Like, I think you should go. Like, do not stay, someone will poison you, I'm quitting, can I go work for you now? So, <laughs> that's where it kind of ends, where Polly's like, yeah, yeah, bro, like, let's go to Bohemia, this guy obviously has problems. That's where we're ending Act 1, hell of an Act 1, things just escalated so quickly. It was just like, oh, I saw my wife talk to someone, she's obviously fucking him. And it was like, wow. <laughs> like, no good is gonna come from this. There's already talk of murder <laughs> and like just craziness in chapter one. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's go to, sh let's, let's just go to act two. <laughs> See what goes on next. Okay, let us finish act two. And remember how I said this escalated quickly? It was nothing compared to act two. Like, oh my gosh, this guy. Like, okay, let's just, let's, let's discuss. <laughs> so, Polly and, and Camillo, they ran off, right? Leo, he finds out about it and he's like, oh, they ran away? They're obviously guilty. <laughs> Could not have anything to do with the fact that I wanted to poison them. Obviously not. They, they're running away because they're guilty. <laughs> So he's already just so crazy and he goes and finds the queen and he's just like listen up lady you've been fucking Polly I'm telling everybody and, and you know what you're pregnant it's Polly's baby probably he's probably his baby and and you're a bed swerver I know I know Leo has like the most like crazy ways of saying like adultery he calls her a bed swerver he calls her a hobby horse like okay <laughs> he's just like you know what Go to jail. Go to jail. You're a bed swerver. You're an adulterer. That's probably not even my baby. You're going to jail. So he sends his wife to jail. And and all the other lords are like, bro, like, I don't think she's fucking anybody else. Like, maybe take a step back. Like, do you have, like, literally any evidence here? <laughs> and Leo's like, it's fine. She's going to jail and she's going to stay in jail until the guys I sent to the Oracle of Delphi come back. I've sent them there. They're going to get the proof from the Oracle and tell me what the Oracle says to prove I'm right. Don't worry. She's going to jail until I'm proven right. So, <laughs> no, no winning with this guy. Later on, um, this woman, Paulina, who, by the way, I am obsessed with. I love her intensely. She is my favorite character right now. So Paulina, she shows up. She's like Hermione's friend, the queen's friend. And she goes to jail. She's not allowed to see the queen, but she's allowed to see one of the ladies in waiting. And this lady in waiting, she's like, hey, the queen gave birth to a baby girl. Isn't it cool? And Paulina's like, oh my gosh, like, I'll take the baby. Like, obviously, it's a dirty prison dungeon. Like, the baby shouldn't be in there. So she's like, I'll take the baby and, like, I'll keep it safe. Like, I got this. Like, she's, like, a badass lady. So she takes the baby, right? And she comes up to the castle area where, like, Leo is. And she's like, hey, Leo, listen up, fuckwit. Look at this baby. It's your fucking baby, you asshole. <laughs> like, she just, like, lays into this guy. Like, all of the dudes in this book are being real, like, pussy about things. They're just like, oh, you know, like, maybe you're wrong. Like, maybe think about things. And, like, Paulina just shows up and she's like, you are wrong. And you're a piece of shit. And you should, like, be thrown out into the sea because I hate you. You and you're stupid and wrong like I love her so much <laughs> and she doesn't convince him he's like nope that baby's a bastard I don't care it looks exactly like me it's still not my baby la 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 get out of here Paulina get out of here I'll have you burned and she's like oh you'll have me burned I'd like to see you try <laughs> so Antigonus her husband who's like one of the lords he's there and he's just like letting her go he's just like hey you know she's not wrong you know like even though like Leo's like Antigonus like are you gonna shut your wife up and he's like nah <laughs> So Paulina's like laying into this guy for so long and I love it and it doesn't go anywhere because eventually he just gets so angry He's like fine. It's not my it's not my baby. It's a bastard baby. Go burn it I want that baby burned. Hey, you go burn this baby and then finally all the dudes are like hey hey like maybe Maybe too far like maybe let's not burn babies even if they're bastards like let's not burn them And it's Leo's like ugh, fine fine. We won't burn the baby and take it as get over here And so he's like hey, Antigonus, you're gonna take this baby 
and you're gonna like leave it in the woods. That way we didn't like kill it, but like it's gonna die. <laughs> That's his compromise to not burning a baby. It's like, oh, let's leave it in the woods. And Antigonus is like, okay, I guess I'll take this baby. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, this guy's fucking nuts. So he leaves with this baby. Obviously, obviously Leo's wrong. And um, oh my gosh, Paulina, I love her so much. She is the best. I love her. I want her all the time on the page just telling Leo he's a fuckwit. I love her. But at the end of Act 2, those two guys he sent to the Oracle of Delphi come back. And it's been like 23 days. It's been a while. And uh, that's, where the, that's where the act ends. They, they don't know what happens yet, but he's just like, oh, they're back? Great. They're going to tell everybody I'm right. Hold a trial. So they're trying to get like this big public trial going to like condemn the queen because he's a man who's never been told he's wrong. <laughs> But here we go. Anyway, we're gonna move on to Act 3 and see what else this asshole does. Oh my gosh, this escalates so quickly. Well, I'm done with Act 3. <laughs> okay, okay. So, they're having the trial, right, for Hermione. And Hermione finally gets up on the stand and she actually just lays into Leontes too. And I'm like, yes, yes, you get him, girl. She's like, seriously? Like, how did you come up with this? Like, before Polly showed up here, we were good. Like, we were all lovey-dovey. We were great. I was totally pregnant with your baby. And like, we were good. And then after Polly gets here, you're like, oh, you've been fucking everybody. And this is not my baby. You're in jail. Fuck you. How did you get here? You suck. You know what? I don't even want to talk to you anymore. Like, like, what do I have to live for if living means I have to go hang out with you? So like, frankly, let's just get what the Oracle says and just go from there. Cause fuck you. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, Hermione. Fuck Leontes. <laughs> So they get the message from the Oracle, right? And the Oracle's just like, bro, Leontes, everybody that you're accusing is completely innocent. You're super wrong. And you know what? On top of that, you're not even gonna have an heir because you threw your baby in the fucking woods to die. Fuck you, Oracle out. And like, that's the whole message. And like, Leontes hears it. He's like, oh, this is from the Oracle? And they're like, yeah. He's like, the Oracle's obviously not right. Like, they're obviously guilty. <laughs> you just, why even go to the Oracle at this point? <laughs> so right after he says that, table's a turn. Because like, this lady shows up, like an attendant. And she's like, hey, sorry to have to tell you this, but your son, Mamilius, you know, your heir, yeah, he just died. Because he's been wasting away since you put his mom in prison because, you know, stress. And he just died. And so after after they hear that, Hermione just like faints and like dies too. So now his wife is dead and his son is dead and he left his daughter in the fucking woods. So he's just like, oh shit, maybe I was wrong. Like that's what it took for Leontes to be like, oh, oh no, I was wrong. I feel bad now. It's, I'm the victim. I'm sad. Like he's just the worst. <laughs> and then my girl Paulina shows up and she's like, what I say? What I say, bitch? Did I not say that was your kid? It was your fucking kid. Fuck you. You're terrible. That's why your whole family died. Cause fuck you. That's why. Suck it, bitch. Like, Le oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Paulina. I just want her to have like her own show where she just like lays into awful men. I love her. <laughs> so after that, cut to Antigonus. He's on a boat and he's going to Bohemia with the baby. Obviously, he didn't leave the baby in the woods. Antigonus is like, no, I'm not going to leave a baby in the woods. Not cool. So he takes the baby in a boat. And he's going to Bohemia. He's just like, I gotta hide this baby. So he brings it to like this remote kind of like farm, right? And he like is leaving the baby there with like gold and like a little scroll and stuff saying like who this baby is. And he like leaves it there. And then you get the famous line, exit pursued by bear. So like all of Antigonus is trouble. He gets there, he saves the baby. His wife, Paulina, badass bitch. And he gets eaten by a fucking bear. Like, why? Why would he get eaten by a bear? Like, <laughs> but 
you know, there's a big commotion about a guy getting hit, eaten by a bear. It's loud. So like this farmer or the shepherd guy comes out with his son and they're like, oh, what's this commotion? Oh, oh shit. There's a baby here. There's a baby here. We should take this baby inside. So they pick it up and the son's like, oh shit, there's a lot of gold here. Like we're good. Like we're going to be rich. And, and then the farmer's like, okay, but like, what about the bear? And he's like, oh yeah, the bear ate that guy. Like, we'll bury him in the morning. It's fine. And so they just go in <laughs> with like a baby and gold and they leave like Antigonus's like partially eaten body outside. They'll deal with it tomorrow. And that's kind of where it ends. <laughs> so it's just like, why get eaten by a bear? Why a bear? Why? 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 <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on. To act four. Act four, I think, is the longest act of this play. So I feel like by the end of act four, I might be in trouble with the amount of wine I've drank. We'll find out together. <laughs> okay. Act four is over. And it is very long, but mostly it's a party. So it's just like people being silly. So anyway, act four. Cut to 16 years later. Remember that baby left at the, at the shepherds? She's all grown up. She's 16 and like she's smoking hot. And then she is in love and this guy is in love with her and the guy is Florizel. And by the way, Florizel is Polixity's son. So he's like the prince of Bohemia. So Polly's son is in love with Perdita, who is Leo's daughter. Oh my gosh, craziness. So they're in love and, and he knows she's like a shepherd's daughter or whatever. And he's like, it's a secret, but we're gonna get engaged. So they're throwing this big party and they're like, oh, we're gonna get engaged, la la la. And like Polly and Camillo, they know Florizel's up to something. So they like disguise themselves in silly disguises. They go to the party and they're like sneaking around, looking what's going on and stuff. And eventually, like right before they're about to sign the marriage contract, he, Polly just like rips off his beard, I guess. He's like, oh, by the way, I'm your dad. And I say, no, I'm not dealing with this. No, 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 no. La la la. Fuck y'all. You're not doing this. By the way, I'm going to kill that shepherd because like, no way, this is not cool. And he like leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it doesn't go over well so Florizel he's like know what fuck it I don't want to be prince I love Bernita I'm gonna be with Bernita and I'll I will I will uh, abdicate my princehood la 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 you know being real like saucy about being a young man and then Camilo is still there he took off his disguise and he's like this is an opportunity <laughs> Camilo he's like hey Florizel I got it. Come here. Come talk to Uncle Camilo. So he talks to him. And see, the thing is, Camilo, he's been wanting to go back to Cecilia. And he's like, I got it. This is an opportunity. So he's like, Florizel, hey, I got it. This is what you're going to do. You're going to take Perdita, right? We're going to get on this boat. And we're going to go to Cecilia. Because want to know why? King Leo He's real sad about all that shit that happened with your dad a while ago. So, like, he'll totally take you in and you can marry the shit out of Perdita there. Like, I got it. This is the best idea I've ever had. Let's go get on this boat. And Florizel's like, you know what, Uncle Camilo? You're, like, totally right. Let's get on this boat. And, like, Perdita's down, too. So they're all gonna get on this boat and go to Cecilia. And then, you know, the shepherd, he's just, like, wandering around talking to his son, going, oh, shit. I'm gonna get hung. I'm gonna get hung because my daughter's hot. Fuck. <laughs> And it, so they decide, okay, this is what we're going to do. Maybe we should, maybe we should just show the king the stuff that came with the baby. Because, like, she had all this gold and the scroll and shit. Like, obviously this is, like, a noble child. Maybe we should just tell the king so he doesn't murder us. So that's just kind of where it ends. It's just a whole, like, like act of a party. And, like, Florizel and Perdita are in love. And they're going to run away and get married. And then that's it. And now we're on to our final act. Act five. Let's see how everything's gonna shake out at the end, because finally we're going back to Cecilia. We're gonna see fucking Leo, 16 years later, being an asshole, probably. <laughs> All right, I have fin finished The Winter's Tale. And you know what, guys? It ended a lot weirder than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so, we go back to Cecilia, we catch up with Leo. It's been 16 years. Leo, has been walking around being real sad. Obviously, he killed his whole family because he's a jealous fuckwit. And then Paulina's still there going, yeah, 
you're sad because you killed your wife for being a fuckwit. And so she's still picking on him. And he's like, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. So like he's learned his lesson a bit. <laughs> but mind you, all these lords are also hanging out with Leo. And they're like, hey, Leo, you should probably remarry and like make an heir. Because like if you die, like nobody's in charge. And that will be a, like a for sure problem. <laughs> But he can't remarry because like no one is as good as Hermione because like he killed her and now he's sad again and he's just like in like a pity party for 16 years. But anyway, Florizel and Perdita show up and they meet with Leo and and they they talk and they're like, hey, we're trying to get married and like my dad is kind of like not cool with it. <laughs> But like Leo's like, oh, you like, you know, I, w I was mean to your dad. Like, I'll let you stay. Like, this is the least I could do. And then they just kind of cut the scene. And then we just go and we, we hear from like gossipy little bitches about what's been going on. Everyone's telling us through the great blind what happened after that. I don't know why we just don't get the scene in like the throne room. We have to hear about it through gossipy little bitches. But anyway, here's what happens. So the shepherd and his son, they come up to, to Polly and they're like, hey so here's the thing we actually found the baby and like here's all this stuff that was with the baby and she's obviously like somewhat important because we have all these things and then polly immediately realizes some of the st like some of the stuff belonged to hermione and he's like oh fuck this is that's that kid that that's leo's daughter oh shit so 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 polly and Camillo, they, they go to Cecilia and they go meet with Leo and, and they make up. They're like, hey, I'm sorry. I tried to like have you murdered for fucking my wife when you didn't do that. So sorry. <laughs> They're cool again. They're like make up. They're bros, I guess. And then they, and he tells Leo like, hey, Perdita's your daughter, homie. And he's like, what? So he's like really happy now. He's like, wow, everything turned out all right for me. I can do whatever I want because he's a terrible human and things just work out for him apparently. Well, he's, he has his best friend back and, and Perdita is the princess. So like Florizel and Perdita could totally get married now because she's a fucking princess. So like, you know, she's not like a shepherd daughter. She's like a princess. So like everybody's just having a good time. <laughs> also, Paulina finally finds out what happens to her husband because like the, the shepherd's son tells her like, oh yeah, he got eaten by a bear, like way eaten by a bear. And you know, Paulina's not happy about that. She's like, oh shit, that's, that's not good. But I'm also proud of him that he died by saving a baby because like he's not a baby murderer. So like she's mixed feelings. <laughs> And then Leo and Polly, they make the shepherd and his son into like proper gentlemen. Like they have a title now because, you know, they raised fucking Perdita. So like everybody's just having a good time. Big happy family conclusion. And so um, they're going to go over to Paulina's house because Paulina has this statue of Hermione that she commissioned by like this guy who's like a master sculptor. Perdita wants to go see the statue in particular because she doesn't know her mom. She's like, I'd like to see what my mom looks like. Like, let's go see the statue. So they all go over to Paulina's house and and they, they get there and she's like, all right, like, I guess I'll let you see it. Let me pull back this curtain. And so she, they pull it back. And it's this super lifelike statue, like incredibly lifelike to the point where it's weird how lifelike it is. And, and also like older looking, like Leo's like, she wasn't that old when she died. And she's like, I know the, the sculptor is so good. He sculpted her 16 years older. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> but like Leo's being a perv now because he's just like, that statue looks real pretty. It's real lifelike. I bet if I touched it, it's warm. And Paulina's like, bro, stop getting a boner for my statue or I'm gonna put it away. Like, you need to stop. <laughs> the, so the, basically the statue is super lifelike. You know, one of those. And uh, so uh, she basically goes, okay, so, um, okay, here's the deal. No one's allowed to say I'm a witch. Let's all agree. Okay, cool, we all agree. Okay, I, I'll make the statue come to life. <laughs> So she she says all these like words and the statue comes to life and it, and it, she comes down and like takes Leo's hand and stuff and they're like oh it's warm and and she speaks and stuff and and she's like yay we're a happy family again but like everyone I don't know why people would think the statue came to life. <laughs> 
it's like probably like Hermione just didn't die before and they snuck her out of the castle and she's been hiding out with Paulina for 16 years and she just like stood real stale for a minute and then she's like oh wait it's cool now <laughs> statue came to life and I'm like obviously it was just not a statue she was just alive <laughs> but just still bullshit though because it's been 16 years and like you know the last time she saw him he basically called her a slut and he hated her and he's like I I'm gonna burn you at the stake because you suck and that that that's her last memory of Leo is that he is a piece of shit why would you want to get back with him girl you can do better it's been 16 years go pretend to be a statue some more like I think that's a better choice and then and then they remember Pauline is there and Pauline is like oh well wish I had my husband still but he's dead now like kind of guilting people and like Leo he's like oh Paulina I got it I'll get you a husband right now Camilo Camilo come over here hey you guys are gonna get married Take ha hold hands there you go so like he just he just determines Camilo and Paulina are gonna get married I'm like they they don't know each other <laughs> He has not been in town for 16 years. Like, maybe they knew each other a little bit before, but it's so weird. <laughs> He's just like, okay, go get married. Yay. Leo is this still like a piece of shit. He does not learn. He's just like, he's, he's a man who's never been told no. <laughs> and that's how the Winter's Tale ends. The statue comes back to life and they all go off and be a happy family and, it, and everything's good. And which... I like what how why why <laughs> I I don't get why things would just turn out okay for Leo like I mean I guess this is this supposed to be a tragedy I don't think it is because it has a happy ending so I guess it's a comedy but like uh, I've seen other really shitty kings in his plays get their comeuppance and like he's just was sad for a bit. <laughs> it was just sad for 16 years. Like, oh, I fucked up and I'm disappointed in myself. And that was like his whole penance. Like he didn't really have anything besides being sad. And and there you go. That's, that's the winner's tale. Leo's an asshole who comes out on top. So overall, did I enjoy the winter's tale? Yeah, you know, it was kind of fun. I do understand why it's perhaps one of his lesser works. There are some moments in there that I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, um, like the gossipy bitches part in this act, for example. It's like, why didn't you just show them having this reunion in the in the throne room? Why would you just throw all these like gossipy bitches hanging out outside the palace going like, hey, you know what I heard? I heard blah, blah, blah. Like, why didn't you just show us a scene? <laughs> So, you know, there are ups and downs here, and it was also, like, just escalated so quickly. <laughs> All of it is just like, oh, I saw my wife talking to him. They must be having sex. Like, it just went so quick. There was, like, no other impetus for him to think that besides, like, he's an asshole who's a little crazy. But, like, you know, like, I wish there was, like, more, like, things happening along the way to make him think that. Otherwise, he's just, like, insane, and no one, no one should take him back. Why would Hermione get back with him? I don't like this. <laughs> but it was fun, I guess. I don't know. I, I liked how everyone else thought Leo was a dick, too, and told him. They're like, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't murder babies. Hey, maybe you shouldn't throw your wife in jail. Like, maybe stop being a jerk. Like, maybe stop trying to poison people. Like, everyone's telling him, like, bro, I think you're wrong. And he listens to none of them. <laughs> <sighs> okay, and also this bottle of wine is gone. So I feel like it's the perfect time to finish this drug classics video. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Have you read The Winter's Tale? And if so, did you like it? Um, I kind of have really a lot of fun doing these Shakespeare ones. So if there's another Shakespeare play you would like me to do for Drunk Classics in particular, let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know if you want me to release like the train wreck of the video that was Little Women. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it out as a bonus video. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see it. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!